Barbary Coast pirates were long past their heyday in the 16th and 17th century, when they were forced by increasingly strong European naval powers into searching farther afield for targets. When America gained its independence from the British, it presented the perfect target for pirates. America was forced to pay over a sixth of the nation's budget for safe passage of ships and on ransoms for those taken by the Barbary pirates. A notable exception among the pirate states was Morocco, who recognized American independence in 1777 and gave American ships free access to Moroccan ports. Tribute, ransoms, and slavery were all large sources of income for the Barbary pirates, with many European states still paying the pirates some form of tribute, even though they had much stronger navies than the USA. After the end of the Revolutionary War, America was in a desperate need for money, and so by 1785, all ships of the Continental Navy were sold off, leaving America with no means to protect its merchant shipping. As more ships were taken and stories of the treatment of enslaved sailors reached home, outrage in America over the situation grew. Many argued that the huge amount of money being given to the Barbary pirates could better be used to build a new navy to protect their own shipping. Finally, in 1794, Congress approved of the construction of four frigates to help protect American ships. The first pirates they would fight, however, would not come from the Barbary coast, they would instead be French privateers. The quasi-war between France and the United States began in 1798 and originated from Congress suspending repayment of loans to France in 1793. After a period of failed negotiations, France retaliated by sending privateers after American shipping in 1796. By late 1797, over 300 American ships had been captured, mostly by French privateers. Congress would eventually authorize a new American Navy to engage French ships and privateers in 1798, along with an informal agreement with the British that allowed American ships to sail with British convoys. The number of ships taken was quickly reduced. Overall, it was a low-intensity conflict for both sides, especially considering the wars France was facing in Europe at the time. In 1800, France made peace with the USA and ended the conflict, returning America to a mostly neutral spectator to the ever-expanding conflicts in Europe. America now had a new navy, experienced fighting at sea against pirates, but as far as the Barbary pirates were concerned, little had changed. The first Barbary War began in 1801, after Tripolitania declared war on the United States for not paying a massive increase of tribute once Thomas Jefferson took office. American ships were sent to the Mediterranean to fight, however, no war was declared by Congress. Once in the Mediterranean, the United States ships joined the Swedish, who were already at war with Tripolitania, as well over similar tribute disputes. The nearby Kingdom of Sicily would also join the war to fight an old enemy that for centuries had posed a problem in the Mediterranean. Initially, the coalition against Tripolitania struggled to achieve any meaningful victories. A small number of smaller engagements resulted in success, but no victories that could end the war. The blockade of Tripoli itself failed as the city was too well guarded and the blockade had little effect. In 1803, the USS Philadelphia was captured and attacked after the ship ran aground in Tripoli's harbor. The crew was taken prisoner and the ship itself was positioned as a floating gun battery to help strengthen the harbor's defenses. The ship would later be destroyed in 1804 after a small raiding party snuck aboard it using a captured vessel and set the ship afire. After further American forces arrived in the Mediterranean, a more direct assault on Tripoli's harbor was attempted, with naval bombardment and a fire ship meant to destroy the city's harbor and fleet. The assault failed, however, and the American ships were forced back to blockading the city. In 1805, a way to finally end the war was decided upon. The Pasha of Tripolitania had a brother who had been exiled, so a small squad of marines landed in Alexandria and together with 500 mercenaries marched overland to restore the brothers' claim to the title of Pasha. They captured the city of Derna and threatened to continue their march onto the city of Tripoli itself. Pasha Yusuf Karamani, threatened by the possible advance, made peace in June 1805, agreeing to no longer demand tribute from America. All American prisoners were ransomed back for 60,000 US dollars. The Pasha's brother, however, Hamet Kalamarni, would be abandoned by the Americans and forced to give up any hope to claim control over Tripoli. Barbary pirates would once more become a problem, however, when America went to war with the British in 1812. The Barbary state of Algiers sided with the British and once more began raiding American vessels. Distracted by the fight against the British, the United States was unable to respond to the renewed piracy until 1815 when a much-strengthened American Navy quickly defeated Algerian forces. A new deal was quickly signed in which captives from both sides were returned, and the USA would no longer pay any form of tribute to the Barbary states. 
After the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815 and the Congress of Vienna, European powers also turned their attention to the Barbary states, forcing them to end their piracy. French colonial expansion later in the century would end the Barbary pirates for good. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to see more on the Napoleonic or Revolutionary Wars, check out my other videos I've made on the topics.